Hello everyone, I am Olive Blade and welcome to my Wonderland. <laughs> Today I have an albedo-liciously planned haul and review for you all. I'm so excited. <laughs> Very super keen to get in and open up this box. I thought I'd do a quick little sketch on the front first because <laughs> why not? And unlike my first unboxing kind of fail, I'll be opening up new untouched boxes. So fresh. <laughs> So then, let's get the blade out and we'll get into this outer box. Ooh, nicely packed, a lot of bubble wrap. And there were also no dints or anything. Oh, you see me shaking the box there. I was just super keen. I haven't even looked at the front window yet. Now turning it to the front and going to carefully lift it out from the box. Actually, I had surprisingly enough room just to pull it straight out. Wonderful. The outer cardboard box, which I just took it out of, is like that thick cushiony type, which I do really appreciate because I think it does a good job at extra protection, especially with thicker shielding wise. But let's move on to the exciting bit. Here I'm talking about a cardboard box. <laughs> just releasing her from the bubble wrap and oh my goodness i am already so excited ah, they also put it in a bag which i'm surprised i haven't really got many figures that are also in a plastic bag but then again a lot of my figures i own are pre-owned so i'm not used to the high standard service of getting a new figure and bringing in the other things to be unboxed such as albedo's nendroid um, this awesome fan and this beautiful artwork. Well, it's like a postcard. Uh, so I, this and the fan I got on proxy service. And so this I got for about like $3. But I just really love the artwork and the card. And I thought, oh, why not? Just put it in. Because I had a few other things that came with that. Look at all this stuff. I wasn't lying when I said this is going to be albedo-liciously good. Now let's start with the small things. So, I've already kind of given you a good idea of this cute little card, so I just pin it in the back. Now, onto this fan. I couldn't find any listings of this on my figure collection. If anyone can find it, please let me know, but I had a good look and still couldn't find it. I think it's a limited item from an event of some kind. Just giving you a good look at the box here. It was brand new, and I just saw it on the proxy site, and I thought... Um, Japanese fan official merch of Albedo I just had to get it and as you can see down the bottom it's by Kadokawa so hopefully I pronounced that right I'm sorry but yeah I, th I thought that was pretty probably a really good call so I had to snatch this up I think I paid about seven dollars for this uh, this is in AUD so Australian dollars let me know what currency you would like me to mainly use while discussing prices. I know everyone uses, um, well, most people use USD, so maybe I'll do that. I'll, I'll have to think about it regardless. And it was a bit little challenging getting out of the box because I didn't want to destroy the outer box because it was beautiful. I wasn't sure if this fan was going to be in colour or black and white or like the red tinge on the outer. I was hoping colour, full colour. And as you can see, it is a full colour fan and I am super excited to open this. And, oh wow, isn't that beautiful? I really love the gentle expression of Albedo with that cheeky little smile. And you can see that cute little Iron Summer in the far right corner. <laughs> Is it, it looks like a balloon or something, I'm not sure. But it's hilarious and I love it. My initial plan was to get this and put it behind 
the new albedo figure that looks like she's wearing like a robe dress kimono she comes also with like iron summer in his bathrobe and i really would love to set and i'll probably put this behind them or at least that's my initial plan but we'll see what happens now on to the next item of this unboxing and it is da, 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 number 642 albedo put smile company nendoroid she was definitely a nendoroid on my list that i really wanted to get especially use the cute little curl on top of her head <laughs> her and tanya from saga of tanya the evil just have this cute little curl and i just adore it probably a quarter of the reason why i love the characters i'm kidding i probably would love them a bit more in depth than that but it's adorable and to die for now oh look at that cut Carefully lifting that up. Perfect, if I do say so myself. Now then, time to get her out. As you see, I'm being way over careful with the box, which is both good and bad. What well, would be ironic if I was to accidentally crush it next, but don't worry, the box is in mint condition apart from being cut open. So then, on first look, she does not come with much at all. She only comes with three different sets of hands. Four including the pair that she has, but do we really include that? And we've got instructions, even though, well I mean they do help, but probably the most helpful for her wings especially, but we'll get to that later. Now then, she, she is kind of very special too because 642 is, well 42 is my favourite number so I thought that was extra cool. Now I'm just having a look at the little accessories in the box. A little concerned about how thin the ends of her wings are but let's see. Now you can see I'm trying to find all the tape and ah uh, man that was a little bit of a hit miss with the lighting I had there as far as I couldn't see how much tape there was. Now carefully opening it, am I, I'm sure I am not the only one who is absolutely terrified when opening one of these because I feel like the pieces are going to just jump everywhere under the desk and because they're small and a lot of my characters has that I like have pale clothing or see-through accessory sort of thing, I'm not going to find it, especially with very pale ground. Anyway, I managed to get it off without any issues. Oh, I can't wait to change it to my favourite faceplate. Now, picking up Nendoroids for the first time, new ones, I feel like it's such a special experience because they are just so petite and adorable. Look at her. Isn't she just the most elegant, beautiful lady you've just seen in chibi form? Oh, what I really love already is her hair. The way her hair is sculpted and the colour of it is just stunning. Now, sorry, I had just had to quickly show you the little Good Smile company on the joints. I did not initially know that the Good Smile logo was actually on the joints and I thought it was just the cutest thing ever and yeah, no, it's like every joint has a smile on it. <laughs> Moving on, taking off all the plastic carefully. I thought this was quite funny where she's meant to have her wings at the back. She has like this sort of anchored grip there. I wasn't sure if that's so that the holes stay wide enough in order to put the joints in when you finally get this figure and put it together. But I thought also, I guess you could use it for hanging if you don't mind her without her wings. <laughs> I don't know. Interesting seam line. I'm not sure if they could have done that better for her hair. Because it kind of does stand out when looking at it with her head off. 
Now then, to the point where I'm like, ah, oh, I'm a little concerned with the sea, how much the wing's bending. I really was scared of breaking it and I thought it was in, but it actually wasn't in and I need to apply a lot of pressure, but I didn't want to bend it. Eventually, after a few minutes, I got one wing in, had to get the other one in. They have a little bit of movement in the extra wing, but really not that much. I got them in and they are cute, but at the same token, a little bit of a pain. It's probably the most annoying bit of this figure. Now the struggle to get the stand in with long haired characters, but what can I say? I just adore long haired characters, so it will always be a struggle, but it's worth it in the end. Oh, she wants to hug you. Now then, for the piece of resistance. Da, 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 da. Hello there. Now then, for the grand finale. The figure that I'm most excited about in this video is the Overlord 3 Albedo Sobin version by Union Creative International LTD. Now then, I just, oh, I was super keen, but I knew I had to get you a quick look at the box interesting that they have the sticker on the top instead of the front corner photos are pretty um, basic they're like the promotional photos that first came out and I really do love those photos especially with like the gothic church background they look pretty awesome now just cutting that little plastic seam Satisfying. And three. Eventually, come on, do it. Just cut it. Cut it! <laughs> I'm really struggling with these cuts. It was so much better than the ones I did on the Android box, even though it was the only one. Carefully lifting up using my X Acto knife not to bend the little lip of the box. And here she comes. One thing I actually really was surprised about is the box was so huge and I was thinking is there going to be a lot of wasted space in this box but when I took it out it actually does enclose a lot of the figure with enough space so it's not going to get hurt if the box did get crushed but still not over exaggerating space where I feel like it's wasted and I've spent an absolute fortune on shipping which shipping at the moment is <laughs> It's very expensive at the moment, especially if you want to get a large box and express shipping or shipping that's not going to take three months, which I am waiting for a few things which are take going to be delivered via ship, so it will take a few months, but some things I just couldn't wait on, so I guess that is on me. But hopefully, like I'm sure many of you other collectors, looking forward to hopefully one day <laughs> the shipping costs getting back to better normality. But until then, we shall endure for the waifus and husbandos, dare I say. <laughs> now then, carefully working out the best way to take the plastic off without ripping any parts off. We don't want any casualties here. And the plastic piece comes cleanly off. Now then, the big one, I recommend starting at one wing, pulling it out gently and working your way around, especially look at that hair. Oh my goodness, so many loose sculpted strands. And then I got the other one around the wing and I carefully just jiggled it off because I couldn't pull it down from one wing down the hair and then to the other one because it was getting caught. These cute little plastic bubble things, it's hard plastic. And that was just to keep, I guess, the wings in place from bending, which I actually really appreciate. I think it was well done. Now then, ah, she is fully assembled. I thought it was easier to put her on the base and then take the plastic off, uh, especially because she's a very heavy figure, I'm not sure if you can tell, but her weight in her wings, and funnily enough, yes, her upper body is so weighted, so I was actually concerned, but she balances very well on the stand, which its circumference area, yes, it looks very big, and it goes to the end of the wings, which you think might make sense, 
but I think it definitely helps balance out the figure. Now, oh, the details. I am just gobsmacked when I took her out of the box. Look at her painted toenails, the shoes. If only I had the legs, I would buy those shoes. They are just stunning. And detail, look how clean the paint job is. It does look like they've ad added the piece on after they've painted it, which I think was a very good decision too. Then again, I'm trying to think how they did attach those pieces. Maybe, I don't know, heat gun, with glue. The tricks of the trade, I'm sure. And then as you're just coming up, you can see details of her like leg band. I'm not sure what the proper name for that is. Forgive me. And look, even her little hand in there that's grasping, I just had to look at the details in there and just holding her little sleeve and that is absolutely adorable. What I really love are these wings. Look at the sculpted detail and the volume. They are just massive and very detailed. I so appreciate that. And the hair. Oh, you're going to say shut up about the wings and hair, but honestly, look. How beautiful they are. They are absolutely gracious, stunningly detailed. And the colouring and the shoes. Look at those little bows. They are just too cute. I thought maybe they just wouldn't suit it, but like is you've got these random bows in the end, but they are just too adorable. It's really hard to show, but at her back there was like a little crisscross corsety like finish to her top. Now onto her face and eyes. Such a cute expression. I really love her necklace with like the spider web design. And that cute little like skull bow on the top of her head. Oh, just to die for. Now then on to the review. Here are my final thoughts. Sculpting. I cannot stress to you enough the beautiful details and quality of her sculpt. The wings are just incredible and gorgeously laid, which creates such a feeling of spatial volume and presence. I am very surprised how they have done her hair, as there are so many loose sculpted strands. Really creates a feeling of detailed depth. I just adore it. Sculpted seams are well hidden following the pattern, and do not even get me started on her shoes. Oh, the clean, complex design and execution of these shoes are just to die for. Can I not say that enough? There is a tiny bit of glue leakage from under her necklace. However, it is only visible in certain lights and angles. Overall, it does not affect my opinion of this figure at all. 10 out of 10. Painting. The paint job of my figure is very clean and crisp. What I think really makes the figure's details and volume stand out is the beautiful blue highlights on her hair and wings. I also really love the colour of the skin tone shading they used. It brings out the beautiful body sculpt and a look of softness and shape. 10 out of 10. Posing. The posing feels and looks are very natural. I think it captures this version of Albedo perfectly personality wise, especially with her style of attire. The wings are positioned well where they do not hide the figure's details. I do very much love her hair, but it does hide the back top part of the outfit, which has a lovely corset-like back piece. However, I cannot think of a better way they could have styled her hair and quite love it at the pose it is, so I can't really take points away for that. Her hand pose is just so delicate and perfectly suits the attitude of this figure. 10 out of 10. Base. Yes. Another simple, very basic black base design. But unlike that of Ein Summer I reviewed last time, the surface is a nice non-textured matte plastic, which I actually think looks not too bad overall. This figure is surprisingly very heavy. Very top heavy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, the base is designed well to compensate for that, having a large surface area and a snug, balanced peg fitting. 8 out of 10. Box. I love the big front window. It gives you already a good in-box look of the figure. 
I think the photo created and used for this box design is just stunning. The box pictures a close face shot, one side angle and two front. I think they should have included a picture of the back of the figure as I think they are missing on displaying some key details. The only reason I would mention this is by some chance if I saw this in a shop for the first time, might be like, hmm, epic figure, she looks beautiful. But what would be an extra push for me to buy this is seeing that gorgeous back view with the feathers, the hair, colouring and detail. Not to mention those cute shoe ribbons on the back. On another note, it is a very big box, but it does not over exceed creating wasted space, which is appreciated considering how big the box already is. 9 out of 10. Enjoyment. I am so very pleased to have this figure in my collection. Every time I look at her, I get lost in her beautiful details, and my appreciation just grows every time I look at her. If you love Albedo as much as I do, this figure is definitely a must-have. Now on to Albedo's Nendoroid 642. Sculpting. The sculpted parts of her Nendoroid are well executed and detailed for her chibi form. Thought was put into her arm movement as you can angle the arms well even with her large bust size. I especially love the sculpt of her fabric and her hair. Her wings, however, could be more detailed even as a simplistic style. 9 out of 10. Painting. The hair colour is just stunning. Her eyes are very well done and the gold accents are clean and beautifully crisp. Posing. I am impressed with the arm movement, but she does have no leg movement due to her dress being a solid sculpt and no additional leg parts or skirt accessories. I can forgive this. However, her wings, not only hard to attach without the fear of breaking or bending, have very limited movability. I really wish they could have had her wings on a proper ball joint. At least, however, much later with their 794th Nendoroid, Jubriel from No Game No Life, who has similar wings, they have improved much by not only having more detail on the feathers, but also a proper ball joint that is easy to move and pose. 8 out of 10. Base. Usual Nendoroid base. Clean, no issues. 10 out of 10. Box. Clean box design showing all posing options. Love the purple accent. The box I think does seem too big considering its limited amount of accessories. But we do all know that boxes did uh, become smaller. Even with figures with more accessories. Ah! Later on as they progressed to the point of today. Now then. Oh, yes, I will give that a 9 out of 10. Actually, I thought the other day it would be so cute to have, like, on the back of an Android box, like a cute little chibi comic or something. Not that it is necessarily that important, but I think it would just be an absolutely adorable idea to do. Anyway. <laughs> Enjoyment. Overall, I think this Albedo Nendoroid is just absolutely adorable. The main thing I am disappointed in is her lack of accessories. Out of my whole small collection of Nendoroids, older and newer than her, she is the one with the least amount of parts. I'm not sure if it's because of the time it was made or if they couldn't think of anything else to pair her with. Nevertheless, I still think she did have enough items in the show for them to at least include one or two things with her. I would have loved to get this special edition version with the Iron Summer Body Pillow. However, I'm willing to pay double the price of the figure just for that extra piece, which even isn't that much. It's just one extra piece, which they probably could have included in the original version of the figure with that extra charge, I think, considering the price of her still. But at the end of the day, she is super cute and elegant, and I'm very happy. She's a part of my collection. 8 out of 10.
Here we have the Overlord 3 Albedo Sobin version by Union Creative International Ltd. Chizuo from Drawera 1 8 scale figure by Alta. Hatsune Miku figure costumes, cafe made version by Taito. What better Nendoroid to use than Albedo herself for scale reference? And of course, you guessed Overlord 3 Eins Algon Afnex by Furio, 1 7 scale. Thank you so much for joining me for this very special unboxing video. I hope you all enjoyed it and also got some insight into these gorgeous merch items and this beautiful figure. If you enjoy my content, be sure to check out my Instagram pages. I have one for my figure account and also my art account. Until next time, I hope you all stay safe and I'll catch you in my next video. Bye! <laughs>